Okay, welcome. Um, my name is Andreas Hermann. I'm part of the performance team. And I talk about containerized performance tests with MM tests. So, in the first part, I will give an introduction to MM tests. Then I will talk about the containerization of it. And then I share some observations. Um, and in the last part, I will give some details for a specific uh, issue that I've run into. MM tests is a test suite for performance tests with several workloads, and it's used within the performance team to actually uh, do tests. It is configurable. It uses configuration files to describe what benchmarks to run with which parameters. It can be extended. It uses so-called shell packs to specify build, installation, and invocation of benchmarks. And if a new benchmark, benchmark should be added, then a new shell pack needs to be written for MM tests. It supports monitoring. Uh, several proc files can be uh, read. Um, and tools like MP start, IO start, FPM start, Turbo start, and others are supported to do monitoring in parallel to the benchmark run. The source is hosted on GitHub, and the maintainer is Mel Gorman. And the code consists mostly of shell scripts and Perl code. Uh, one major part is configuration files. And I give an example here for a benchmark called uh, workload count bench max. The first line in uh, such a uh, configuration file is uh, to specify the actual benchmark to be run. Uh, multiple benchmarks can be specified here. The first section test is set up here uh, is to specify uh, what test disk to use and which file system to use. This section is optional. If it, not, it is not specified, then uh, just a normal file system is used in the subdirectory there for test data. Then there is a section for uh, monitoring. There can a list of monitors be specified, which will be executed during the benchmark run. So there are different kinds of monitors, and MM tests knows internally how to handle them, how to set up them. And the last line on this slide, uh, the update frequency is for the monitoring. It specifies in seconds uh, how often the monitoring should happen. For instance, for PROC VM start, every 10 seconds, uh, if this monitor is used, uh, PROC VM start is re read out. And last not least, there is the important section for the benchmark. If more than one benchmark is specified in the configuration file, then for each benchmark, a separate benchmark configuration section has to follow. And here is a section for a benchmark called Kern Bench. Basically, that's measuring the uh, time to compile a kernel. And uh, the parameters here are the iterations, three iterations of the tests are run. Uh, min and maximum threads are specified for the compile jobs to be used during make. And uh, this config file has the suffix max, so min threads is also set to a number of CPUs. So that means uh, min and max values are the same. If they differ, then additional iterations will happen between the min and max value of threads. Um, then uh, config is specified to be used uh, for the kernel build. The targets are specified. Uh, warm up does not happen as specified here. And in the last line, it's specified that kernel 5.14 should be built with this, con with this configuration. Um, then how is uh, it used? Uh, there is an important script called run mmtest.sh, which has one required argument that is the test name or also called run name for the test. This specifies in the end the subdirectory uh, where the uh, benchmark results are stored, for instance. 
And uh, here I give two examples. You should assume that between both test runs, a new kernel is booted on the test system. So with the first uh, line, a uh, benchmark, a current bench benchmark is run with a vanilla kernel, and this no monitor uh, argument here specifies that no monitoring should happen during the test run. So this overrides what is written in the config file. And uh, the, the second example here is to do the very same test with a different kernel, and it gives a different run name here. And when the test is finished, uh, the result data is saved under subdirectory work slash log. And there are then two subdirectories for each run. And there is another script in MMTest called comparekernels.sh, which is used to actually compare the results. And I've said that uh, there's also Perl code in uh, MMTest and uh, mostly this Perl code is used to extract, pass, process uh, the results from different benchmarks. So if you uh, change to the work log directory and call the compare kernel scripts, then MMTest would create something like this. This is just the first few lines of the output. And it compares uh, the two uh, uh, benchmark runs with the different kernels, and uh, uh, it provides different statistics. Uh, the most important thing here is the arithmetic mean uh, for the benchmark run for user system and elapsed time. And we see here that there is no significant change between both runs. So next I come to containerization. So that's about placing uh, MM tests within a container. There were some initial goals for this work. Uh, one was to use base container images for SLE 15 and similar for Leap and Tumbleweed. I've listed here the registries where those uh, images can be found. Uh, a second, second objective was to use um, or to create the container to be tested uh, on the fly with MM tests. This is uh, mainly to, uh, uh, for, for easier update of MM tests. So you just update the container with MM tests and have always the latest version. And another objective is to, uh, that um, this support should be easy integratable into the higher level test automation. So it should uh, behave similar to the run MM test script mentioned before, and there's also a run KVM script, which would do tests within a KVM environment. And if a new script is added, it should behave quite similar. For instance, uh, put the results in the expected subdirectory structure. And last not least, uh, keep things simple. So I came up with a run container.sh script and this is basically a wrapper around run, run MM tests and places the execution in a container. It supports as command line interfaces both Podman and Docker to manage the container. It has some auto detection uh, for the base container image to be used. Uh, so it basically pauses uh, ETC OS release and tries to find a corresponding image. Um, this can be overwritten on the command line with an explicit image, and uh, this allows to use, in theory, arbitrary images as a base for the test. Uh, one requirement to this is uh, that the image selected should have a working package, ma package manager in it. This is because RunMMTest run uh, tries to install required packages for uh, test build, installation, and execution. And so uh, package manager should be working in the image. And I've also tried it with Ubuntu and Fedora images, for instance. And the script also supports an interactive mode. Uh, this will set up the container, prepare MM tests in it, and start an interactive shell. So this can be used for debugging purposes if this is required. 
Next, I come to the workflow, to the main workflow in the containerization script. So first, the OS version is checked. As I said, this is used uh, for uh, determination of the base container image. Uh, then the uh, command line interface is prepared. So this basically means to install Podman or Docker in uh, the host operating system. The default is Podman and the selection between those uh, happens uh, with a uh, uh, shell variable. Then uh, the image is pulled from a registry and the container is started. Then there is an update container step. Uh, this is a hook to do some preparation steps. I, I've mentioned Ubuntu and Fedora. For those, I had to make sure that the package manager is initialized. And in ca case of Fedora, I had to install uh, Perl in the image before run MM tests is called because that is required by MM tests. Then uh, the prepare MM test step follows. Uh, this is to copy the MM test directory structure onto the image. Uh, that's the main task there. And if this is done, run MM tests uh, can be called. Uh, this executes uh, the benchmark run in the container environment. And when this is finished, the results are copied from the container file system into the host file system. After that, some host information is locked, the container is stopped, and finally, the container CLI is cleaned up. That means to remove the container and also the image from the host. Now I come to some detailed snippets from the script. The first is from start container, and it shows how the container is started with the run command, either of Docker or from Podman. Minus T and minus D are used to place the container into the background and to make sure that it's still running. Um, the pitch limit parameter, I come to that later in the talk. And then there is a mount option here, and this uh, bind mounts uh, the uh, test disk directory from the host into the container. And before the run command is called, I do a um, run mm test call with an option called mount only in the host, which uh, evaluates the test disk sec section of the config file and mounts uh, the test disk in the host, con uh, host operating system. Then uh, run mm test function, there an exec command is uh, used to actually uh, execute the run mm test command in the container. The minus w option here uh, places the execution in the mm test subdirectory and the container ID as parameter is uh, received in the above run command call. And when the test is finished, ah, sorry. Uh, and uh, in this run mm test call here, there is a no mount option. As I said previously, uh, the host takes, in the host, uh, the test disk is mounted. So in the container, it is not mounted again. Um, just above shown, the bind mount happens from the host into the container for the test disk directory. So when the test is finished, the results are copied from the container file system into the host file system. Invocation of the script is quite similar to run and end tests. And uh, the only required argument is again the test name. And uh, here I give an example to compare a, a run for the kernel bench benchmark with a vanilla kernel and uh, then compare it to a run with a, Podman, with a container started with Podman. So uh, the uh, actual call looks quite similar and the comparison of the results happens uh, similar to what I have shown in the previous example. And here's some example output between 5, 14, 21 vanilla and uh, the same test placed in a container. And what we see here is that 
the execution time was slower in the container. There was a performance decrease of about 9%. Observations from the um, MM tests in containerized environment. Um, the base container images might miss packages that are usually installed when you prepare a test system or install the base distribution. Um, this, uh, this caused some hiccups with uh, shell packs because some uh, packages were missing that are required for test installation or test execution. The easy solution was here to update MM tests, the shell pack there, um, to add the missing uh, installed de dependency information. Examples are uh, for shell packs Postgres and MariaDB. Uh, in the container, in the base container image, there was no user nobody that was required. So I added uh, the requirement for the package system user nobody to both shell packs. And another case was that the C++ compiler was missing and uh, the requirement was not specified for some benchmark. Restrictions. Uh, a container is a restricted environment uh, and that might mean that uh, the environment is not suitable for every benchmark. Uh, for instance, uh, the PITS C group is used and PITS max is set to 2048 uh, PITS. And this prevents uh, some benchmarks from creating the desired number of processes or threads, which meant that either pthread create or fork failed during the benchmark. And the solution is to use uh, the argument PITS limit minus one when the container is started, and this was already shown in the run command above. And another issue I've seen was that uh, uh, the CAPSYS NICE capability is not set per default for the container. Uh, and this means that the scheduling priority can't be increased for uh, container processes, and also the scheduling policy can't be changed. So, for instance, if you use NICE to decrease the NICE values, then you get an EPERM error in the container. But there is a solution also for this, and this is the cup add this NICE parameter when the container is started. Tests. Um, MM tests has uh, about 150 shell packs, about 250. 50 base test configurations, like shown uh, in this example for Kernbench. And it creates several thousand test configurations based on those base test configurations. And uh, just, uh, can I ask? Uh, so you mentioned that you know, for some benchmarks, we may need additional capabilities when starting the container, like this is nice, yeah, but it can be case with other capabilities. So do we have some way how to do this like cleanly? Like, in a benchmark configuration, for example, specify that additional capabilities are needed for container runs? Or um, how do you envision this? I this? actually did not yet thought about that. Mm -hmm. um, I've uh, solved the PITS uh, limit issue by just uh, changing the command line and thought about to do the same if the uh, CAPS is uh, nice capability. Uh, of course, it is also uh, feasible to use yeah, we could have like a config, like one environment variable in the config, we could specify the needed cap capabilities yeah, for the container. That could be done as well, yeah. yeah. That may be the cleanest way to do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, uh, I was uh, talking about the available test configurations. Um, there are just a lot of configurations to possibly test. And there are, all, all, are also some real long-running benchmarks there. So it was just impossible to test everything. So I started with about 20 test configurations to test manually. Among those were some I.O., NUMA, scheduler benchmarks, one-page reclaim benchmark, and other workloads. More will follow over time. 
And in the regulate, regular automated tests, some of these test configurations were selected, uh, somehow similar to what is already done for KVM tests. And this might also change over time. So uh, actual results uh, here for, for leap 15.4 as host OS. Um, most of the tests were uh, had uh, no significant changes between the bare metal test run and the container test run. Some test results were kind of inconclusive. Uh, FIO is uh, mentioned here. So if you have a uh, difference in benchmark runs where the reads performance is increased, but the write performance decreased, you can't say that uh, overall performance is slower. So that is kind of inconclusive. Uh, there was one odd benchmark that showed higher performance numbers when run in a container. That was the page quick claim LM bench. But the most interesting thing was uh, where the tests where the performance decreased when run in the container. Somehow, this might have been expected. I mean, you have C groups and namespaces and other stuff for the container, and maybe this has some overhead, so I somehow uh, expected that performance numbers might go down. Um, and the tests were, that, that actually showed uh, performance decrease for, were, for instance, Autonuma bench and Kern bench. Especially Kern bench showed about 8% performance decreasing when run in a container compared to a bare metal run. Um, and as shown in the uh, before mentioned example uh, with, two, uh, with 5, 14, 21 vanilla kernels, there was even 9% performance decrease. So I selected Kern bench because uh, it uh, was quite good reproducible with its numbers to do more investigation and debugging. But unfortunately, this was also inconclusive. So uh, monitoring data didn't reveal anything of value, and even profiling with perf did not point to anything of value. So um, yeah, it, uh, it was kind of that everything was slowed down somehow but uh, I couldn't point to any specific, specific uh, software component that caused the performance drop. So now I come to SecComp and speculative store bypass. The mentioned current bench performance issue with the container test was reproducible with different distribution kernels, also with vanilla kernels that were used as the base for the distributions. Um, sometime I figured that uh, more recent upstream kernels did not show the performance drop between bare metal run and container test run. And I eventually figured that a change for CPU vulnerability mitigation in mainline made a difference. The uh, commit in mainline is provided here, and it was to change uh, enablement for two mitigations from uh, SecComp parameter to PRCDL. And this commit went into 5.16. And the previous default was to enable uh, both mitigations, spec, spec store bypass disable and Spectra v2 user um, for SecComp threads. And the change was to no longer do this in mainline. Uh, SecComp is used to uh, set system call filters, and the container software uses it to place the container into a so-called SecComp jail to allow just a subset of all available uh, system calls in the container environment. Uh, the default uh, second profile that is used uh, by Docker and Podman can be overwritten, like given here with a JSON profile. And uh, there's also an option to uh, run the container unconfined with respect to SecComp. So what all this means is that uh, the mitigations mentioned on the last slide uh, make or might make a difference for a container because a container uses 
äh, per Default äh, der Comp. And uh, an important uh, note is that I have tested all combinations of uh, below mitigations, and it turned out that spec store bypass disable made the difference in the performance for the container. And this is just some information for the speculative speculative store bypass issue. It's a hardware security vulnerability. Uh, has to do with speculative execution. And under certain conditions, load instructions can bypass earlier store instructions, with, which gives the name to this vulnerability. And there's a CVE number provided here, uh, and it's easy to find further information about this in the internet. Uh, patches to support the mitigation for this problem went into mainline kernel in 2018, and I think quite from the beginning, the default was to enable the mitigation also for threads using seccomp. There's also some proof of concept code available, and uh, on the affected test system, it could be used to um, see whether it works on bare metal and whether it works in the container. And if the mitigation is enabled, uh, it doesn't work in the container, of course. <clears throat> um, here I give some uh, information from CBU info uh, where you can check whether this uh, spec store bypass uh, disable mitigation is enabled for ZECOM threads or not. And the first example it is, that's uh, how it looks like on our distributions. And uh, in this case, uh, a thread can opt out from using this mitigation by setting a ZECOM filter flag. <clears throat> and the second example at the bottom shows uh, the same uh, similar output for a system which is using a newer kernel or uh, with a different kernel command line where the uh, mitigation for speculative store bypass is, uh, bypass disable is not enabled for the conference. In such an example, uh, PRCDL can be used to enable mitigation. So, uh, final slide. Um, some conclusions regarding this performance issue observed with Kernel Bench in a containerized environment. Um, the test is sensitive to mitigation for SSB. And without the mitigation, uh, the performance uh, was on par with bare metal. If distribution kernels update to newer kernel versions, like 6.x kernel versions, um, the mitigation won't be enabled per default anymore, and this issue won't show there. For older kernel versions, uh, the mitigation for SSB can be switched off uh, by using uh, spec store bypass disable equals PRCTL. And a quick and dirty performance fix can be to start a container in an unconfined environment. Of course, uh, and uh, yeah, of course, this means uh, that some security issue might be exposed to the container. And uh, it all depends whether you trust the workload that is run in the container or not. So on balance, it's always a trade-off between security and performance if you do this. So that is what I had for my talk. Thank you.